Welcome to CivilNet. My guest today is Mirza Dinai. So he is one of the three humanitarians of the 2018, 2019 Aurora Prize for Awakening Humanity. Aurora Prize recognizes people for performing acts of exceptional courage and their commitment to saving human life. Mr. Dinai is a Yazidi activist, uh, co-founder and director of Airbridge Iraq, a humanitarian organization that flies Yazidi victims from Iraq to Germany for medical treatment. Welcome, Mr. Dinai. Thank you very much. And thank you for joining us. Uh, so you moved from Iraq to Germany to escape persecution. It was 1994, right? Later, in 2014, you survived also to a helicopter crash while taking part in a rescue operation, which uh, aimed at to deliver food and water to Yazidis from Iraq. And you have experienced war and traumas of war. You've seen that. You could have chosen to live a peaceful life in Germany after all that. But you are fully involved in the rescue of Yazidis in Iraq. Uh, and those Yazidis are victims of ISIS, which is a terrorist group. Uh, what gives you the strength to commit yourself um, in this action? Uh, thank you very much for inviting me to this interview. So actually the question is, it's not only to me, to everyone who survived uh, such kind of atrocities or genocide. Why those human beings who have been victimized uh, by tyrannies, by the government, by, by terror organization, why they decided suddenly to switch and take their uh, all power and work for the other victims. I think this is be because of that all of us as human beings, we are sharing the same values. And if you are victim, you know how uh, the situation of another victims is. And we saw that, for example, by survivor, the, even the grandchildren of the survivors of the Armenian genocide, they decided to make such a, a, a unique uh, uh, forum and initiative which is uh, named Aurora Initiative. <clears throat> so for me was also, this is the, 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 the same spirit that I chose because uh, I saw uh, uh, how my community is, uh, uh, is suffering, is vulnerable, and uh, I was uh, also as a young student activist for the human rights for the all minorities in Iraq. And as this uh, genocide happened to the Yazidis in August 2014, I was eyewitness of uh, uh, mo uh, many events that happened to those innocent people. I saw the people dying. I saw uh, a young boy fallen from the helicopter as we tried to, to, to rescue others. And he crashed the border of the helicopter and he, he fell down without to helping them. And the, the pictures of those victims is every time in front of my eye, uh, of eye in, in front of my eyes. And therefore, I said uh, uh, I would feel myself guilty if I uh, have peaceful life in Germany and live only in Germany in peace and leave my people uh, behind. And this was the reason that I am working. And in every day when I am not doing a new thing. I feel myself again guilty because I say there are other people who, are, who need my help. Um, so the Airbridge Iraq organization that you co-founded has helped to transport uh, Yazidis from Iraq, as we said. Um, not and only Yazidis, huh? not, not only, only the Yazidis, all, all the children. Uh, so we, the, the Airbridge Iraq was established in 2007 uh, after a, a, a huge terror attack again, um, committed by Al-Qaeda organization against two Yazidi villages. And by this uh, ter terror attack, more than 850 uh, people were injured and more than 300 people were killed. And there were a lot of uh, children in the victims of this attack. And I decided spontaneously to take all those children who need uh, medical care uh, uh, from Iraq to Germany, those children who uh, whom the situation was very bad. So as we get the first uh, uh, mission, uh, so spontaneous mission, I decided to, with other some friends, to make it as an NGO because there was no uh, any German NGO in Iraq which is w working for the victims. 
And uh, since that time, we are helping all Iraqi children from all components and groups and ethnic and religious groups whenever and however we can find a solution or a treatment for them, we try to help them. But actively after 2014, I was uh, actively engaged in helping Yazidi women and children because this was the most vulnerable group of the victims in Iraq. Mm -hmm. um, and actually right now, so um, 2014, the genocide, but right now we, uh, we can see that in the media we, s we don't, we talk less about what's going on, the exactions that are happening still. So can you tell us what is the current situation in Iraq for the Yazidi community? Miserable. In one word, if you say miserable, because we have still 80% of the Yazidi community are displaced in, as refugees in some tents in the camps in uh, Kurdistan, uh, in the north part of Iraq. And we have, or, or they are refugee otherwise in the other part of the world until Europe. Uh, we have uh, the people, 80% uh, of the people couldn't return back to their villages in Sinjar. We have still more than 2,900 women and children. So actually from 6,500 who have been enslaved and captured by ISIS, still after five years, after defeating of, 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 of ISIS and, and announcement of that ISIS is, had been defeated and uh, uh, we have still 2,900 women and children, their destiny is missed, they are still in the captivity, somehow they, uh, or somewhere they are uh, uh, um, uh, victims of the slavery market among ISIS fighters, ISIS families. So. Uh, the people cannot return back to their areas because of those, uh, all those political conflicts in, in Iraq and especially in Sinjar region which become no more a local domestic region, domestic conflict. Now there are international factors and the neighbor countries, they are interfering in the matter of Sinjar as a disputed area. So the people ca cannot trust the Iraqi government in order to return back because they don't know what would happen. There is no Iraqi agenda or schedule for the international justice, for reconciliation. So you, f you see those people are living and dying in these uh, uh, camps. And uh, even the, 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 the tent are five years old. They are not fire and waterproof. Many of the people are, you, you have every year you know, many accidents of the, only the fire accident, the people are dying in these tents and they cannot return back. This is, they have no, no uh, perspectives of returning back and uh, no hope. And this is what, uh, what's uh, making the Yazidi issue very painful because beside all these atrocities and the plight that my community has, uh, until now, there is no international tribunal or even a domestic tribunal to deal with the uh, Yazidi issue, with the, with the, with the crimes of ISIS, uh, and there is, no, there is no international criminal court that can accept the case of the Yazidis to be accepted. We, we are lucky that we have solidarity with the population, with the solar, solid, international solidarity. Somehow, there is a political recognition from some countries just Armenia, one, one was, we are thankful for that, that was one of the countries that accepted or, or recognized the Yazidi genocide in, from the parliament, but there is no legal procedure for recognition, and which is very bad, and the people see there is no justice and there is no implementation of such legal procedure to bring, to try the, the, the fighters of ISIS in, in Iraq or Syria. And also, uh, when uh, those victims of atrocities and of slavery, they, when they come to Georgia, I guess you've seen some people, you talked with some of them. What are the, um, the psychological health consequences for them? Yeah, you know, uh, you can imagine that, that uh, a woman or a girl, even 11 years or, or t 10 years uh, old girl, she was uh, 20 times sold among ISIS uh, fighters. She was raped many times. 
and uh, their family members are killed. So when those girls and, and women return back to the community, the community is vulnerable. They don't find enough support from the from because there is there is lack of of the of the of the help and aid for for those there is a lack of of competence uh, of the trauma therapy so they are completely traumatized with ptsd depression suicide so this is the the, the situation of those and this for this reason we try to convince european countries to uh, make some special quotas and this was uh, the reason that the, the, the German state, Baden-Württemberg, decided to take up to, uh, to 1,100 1, women and children from Iraq, and I was engaged in that project of the resettlement of those victims to Germany. Uh, how can organizations such as um, Aurora, or how can the Aura Prize Initiative contribute to improve the situation for the Yazidi community? Well, I think the first important uh, uh, thing, if we take it from the spirit of Aurora Prize, Aurora Initiative, that was established by the uh, grandchildren of the uh, uh, victims and survivors of, a, of Armenian genocide. So it will be, bring more awareness about the genocide of Yazidis. So the Armenian genocide was still 100 years uh, uh, gone, but still there are some people are denying this genocide. And I'm afraid if there is no international engagement, the Yazidi genocide will be also forgotten. So therefore, it is very important that we will be bring more awareness through Aurora Prize, through other, uh, through, through other initiatives to, est to encourage the international community to help the victims to recognize the genocide in the legal way. And this is very important. This will uh, give also a hope to my community to say that there is international solidarity. You know, Yazidi community, they are survivor of 72 genocide during their history. And the most of these genocide attacks were committed by Ottoman. And no one of the previous genocide from the 72 was recognized nowhere. Even in the Armenian genocide, there were many Yazidis who have been victimized in Turkey. Even my grandfather escaped from Turkey 100 years ago from the Armenian genocide because the Yazidis were just like Azurian, like other minorities, non-Muslim minorities, they were killed beside as a collateral damage to the to the to the to the Armenian genocide, unfortunately. So, uh, but only in this genocide of 2014, uh, we the, our voice was heard by by uh, civilized uh, civilized uh, communities in the world. Many countries like Armenia, like U.S., like Germany, they heard our voice. They recognized somehow. They tried to help, but we need more in order to be uh, to have such recognition. In order to have. Uh, 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 the rights for those uh, women and children, other victims who have been killed. Uh, last question. Um, so Armenia has a big community of Yazidis. And uh, recently, last month, actually in September, um, the largest Yazidi temple in the world was opened here in Armenia. Um, in general, have you been to this temple in there? And have you, did, did you have... Um, have you met the represent representatives of the Yazdi community in Armenia? Can you tell us about that? Well, this is not my first time that I visit Yerevan. Uh, and actually, uh, the first temple that was established in 2013 or 12, uh, I was uh, a part of the Iraqi Yazidi delegation. Uh, we participated in the, in the, in the opening ceremonies. Uh, I am so happy that uh, officially it is the first time, the first time in our history, by the way, that a Yazidi temple was uh, built outside of, uh, of Iraq. So actually Yazidi usually they don't use the temples out, they don't build the temples out, outside of the countries. But it shows the, uh, how the both communities, Armenian and Yazidis, are, have, are they sharing the same values, the same history, and, and a lot of positive history, even uh, even theological history, we have a lot of uh, uh, similarities, but also, unfortunately, a lot of pain we are sharing together. And I was so happy that uh, the temple was officially announced here in Armenia, and this is a um, big history for my community here in Armenia. 
and for Armenia as a state and population, we are very thankful for that. If, uh, by the way, thousands of the Yazidi people from all over the world have participated three weeks ago in this uh, opening. It was a unique uh, uh, event for all Yazidis in the world. Thank you, Mr. Dinaev, for this talk. Thank you for watching and continue to follow CivilNet.